Okay, so today I'm looking at doing pure comfort food. I've made a roast chicken for the kids. I've got some potatoes on boiling to make roast potatoes for everybody and for the adults. And as a kind of a side for the kids, we're doing uh, a mushroom sauce, but it's going to be a whole meal for myself and hubby. So what you're going to use for this is, I'm using three punnets of mushrooms. I'm using a tin of condensed mushroom soup. Now, look, if you're totally aghast at me using that, listen, there are days when time is tight and there is nothing wrong with using a tin of soup like that. Salt intake might be a little bit higher than on a normal day if you're used to making everything from scratch, which we generally are, but you know yourself when you're trying to get time together to get out and get training, occasionally there's gonna be a few shortcuts and this is certainly not the worst of them. So I'm using some mushroom soup. I've had three punnets of mushrooms, which are in here and they have been fried and I wanted to do them before I came on because um, with the very advanced uh, sound kit I have to record these sessions, i.e. my phone, uh, you can hear everything really, really loudly as so the feedback tells me. So um, I have fried up three punnets of mushrooms here. I've sliced them thinly. Correction, the 12 year old has sliced them thinly. I've added uh, some garlic, the mushrooms and a little bit of butter into the pan and everything has been fried up here. So I always fry the mushrooms first because what I don't want to happen is for them to kind of get, uh, to start easing out all that water and for them to get soggy. So when you're frying mushrooms, leave them in a pan, high heat, watch the water come out of them, watch the water evaporate, and then you can start turning them or tossing them uh, in the pan to just get that nice caramelized covering on them. Now you can also add a drop of white wine if you like to give a beautiful flavor. Once you have kind of fried off the, the liquid on the mushrooms, uh, don't have any white wine in the house this week. So um, that's just mushrooms and garlic. So we're gonna add to that a little bit now. In the meantime, I have some uh, potatoes boiling here. So I'm just going to check those as well. Okay, those potatoes look absolutely perfect. Now I want to give you a little tip. Of course, I'm sure everybody is uh, totally adept at making roast potatoes here, but a little tip my mum showed me. Um, I'm gonna just drain these and then I'll show you. Okay, here's the magic tip. You know when you uh, boil potatoes, and they come out and then you roast them and they're kind of shiny and they get a little bit leathery on the outside and they're fluffy on the inside. What we really want is a nice crispy potato on the outside. We want it crisp and delicious on the outside and soft and fluffy on the inside. So the trick to that is very, very complicated. What I'm gonna show you. oven dish and it's one very very simple step we just bang them in the pot like that so they're kind of going to break apart they go all a little bit mushy some of them will and once you've done that it just breaks the outside breaks the seal let some of that fluffy potato out don't ask me about the physics of this but it just works to make nice potatoes you can also just work at dropping them from a height and they'll all crack um, but maybe that would result in a more messy uh, outcome. So I'm going to drizzle these babies with a little bit of oil, season them. Now what you can do for some delicious roast uh, potatoes, just batter that one a little bit, is you can add some dried um, mustard powder. It's a beautiful flavour on the outside and it's my Swedish aunt who came up with that one. Uh, they use mustard for everything in Sweden. So, now what I usually do as well for the roast potatoes is um, I make garlic oil myself. So I fill a little jar with olive oil and I chop five or six cloves of garlic into it. However, we are at the moment as well um, loving our fried potatoes with our breakfast. And some of the crew here aren't a fan of garlic for breakfast. So I'm going to leave it off today and we're going to just drizzle a little bit of olive oil there. 
and put some seasoning on top. So seasoning being your black pepper. So the funny thing is, it's, it's somebody asked me the other day to, sh to tell them how to make an omelette. And I do forget sometimes that if you haven't been taught these things, if you haven't been taught these small little skills that the simplest of things can be difficult for some people. So um, that's why I wanted to come and show you this. And I'm sure loads of you know how to make roast potatoes. That's not actually hot. So I'm gonna pop these in the oven at about 180 degrees. And in about 20 minutes, that top should be nice and golden. Okay, so in the meantime, my mushrooms are cooked. And I'm going to add in uh, my chickpeas. So I've just taken one tin of chickpeas and drained them. And of course, we're adding chickpeas just for extra nutrition. Um, with soya products, they are a whole protein. So I know I think I touched on this last week. When you have a whole protein, it is a protein with the full range of the nine essential amino acids. So tofu is a whole protein, but for just for an extra protein boost and a little bit more carbohydrate, I'm adding in some chickpeas and they give a lovely uh, texture as well. So especially if you're eating a vegetarian um, style diet, it can be difficult to kind of have the main element of a meal. So if you make a curry and you just have the curry sauce and the veg, it always feels like it's missing something. Whereas chickpeas give it a little bit of a bite, so you feel like you're not missing out on that um, element of, of uh, the bite in your food, you know? So that's why the chickpeas are going in there. Okay, the other thing I'm going to do here is to chop some spinach and pop that in as well. Now, I would be using the spinach for my own garden, but it's not quite ready. And we know that when we put spinach into a hot meal like this, it's actually going to wilt down. So you could put this whole bag in and it would nearly disappear. Now that in and of itself is great, but I do like to chop my spinach because I don't really like when there's stringy bits of spinach in my meal. And again, we're adding spinach just to have that extra element of greens. We're adding in the iron component here. Um, and it's just good to try and get something green with most of your meals. I'm excited about this meal already. We're just about to head out shortly for a 3k swim off the coast of West Cork. And uh, this is going to be the, the refeed afterwards. So something nice and warm, just pure comfort food, good Irish potatoes, and this delicious creamy sauce on top. So I'm gonna pop this into the mix as well. I'm gonna do that over here so you can see that even with just a little bit of heat, how that will wilt down here. Where's my mixer gone? So, What you're left with is just a beautiful, beautiful, nourishing meal. And so when it comes to vitamin D, uh, we get most of it from the sun or we supplement. And across the board, Irish people tend to be very um, deficient in vitamin D. However, if your mushrooms have been grown under UV light, which lots of them are, you're going to get um, you're going to get some vitamin D from your mushrooms as well. So it's not likely that you'd get your whole required intake from mushrooms, but you get a little bit of a boost anyway, that's for sure. So if you are low on vitamin D, which again, look, as a triathlete, if you're out and about during the summer, it's very likely that you're wearing sunscreen. So even that, getting, getting your vitamin D in that instance can be quite difficult. So, oops, switched off. Turn that on again. So it is important to either supplement or to ensure that your diet contains foods that are fortified with vitamin D. And vitamin D is important for a number of reasons. It's really prominent in, um, in your immunity and in developing your immune system. 
So in terms of your ability to recover, and look, we all know that endurance athletes tend to be more prone to upper respiratory tract infections. So if you're going for a long cycle, you want to make sure your immune system is as bolstered as possible or as supported as possible um, because those long rides, those long runs, and indeed getting from the hot air into the open water and being cold can all give your immune system a little bit of a knock. So we want to do everything possible nutritionally to support it. I often hear the phrase, uh, what are you going to do to boost your immune system? It's not really something that can be boosted, but it can be supported and it can be optimized. Okay, so I have one red onion there now. seems a bit strange to put the onion in last but as I said I didn't want to take enough space in the pan uh, for when we were cooking uh, the mushrooms. So what I'm also going to add to that is a little bit of garlic powder, a little bit of onion powder and some fresh thyme. So we'll get that thyme now. I won't use Fresh is actually, it's nicer, gives I suppose more full flavour, but um, we're going to use dried for now. So just, just a pinch of it. If you're happier using teaspoons, um, you can use about a half a teaspoon. Thyme and mushrooms, the flavour is awesome. So we have our roast chicken here, we have our roast potatoes in, I am going to give these a stir. And we're going to add in that little bit of garlic powder. And again, that half teaspoon of onion powder. I have a wolf found here on the floor under my feet. She loves to be in the kitchen when I'm cooking. So we're just frying up the onions. And then we're gonna add some of the soup here. So I don't usually add, um, I don't usually add all of it. I usually add about half of it, depending on how, uh, how many mushrooms I'm using or how many uh, punnets of mushrooms I'm using. And then you can top up the other half with milk if you like. Some people prefer to top it up with water. I want to use milk because I like when this is nice creamy sauce and it just gets you away without using uh, cream if you're trying to keep your saturated fat intake low. So I'm going to use this as a gravy for the kids for their, uh, for their roast chicken dinner. Now what you can also do here, and it just brings the flavor just up a level is chop in a red pepper and add it to the mix. I'm in two minds whether I'll do that, but I'm kind of half thinking I will now. I'll be changing the recipe as I go. And it is nice. It kind of um, it brings a sweetness to it. So we'll add in half a red pepper. So again, as with any of these recipes, um, you can play around with them and add bits as you like. I'm going to add the tofu at the end. Uh, if you want to, if you're having it with roast chicken, obviously you don't need the tofu. Uh, you might find if you prefer to have more roast potatoes that you don't need to add the chickpeas. As I said to you a while ago, I'm adding the chickpeas because I just want that little extra bite. And it's... Also, I'm making such a big batch that you could have this on toast for your breakfast in the morning, just your fried mushrooms on toast, and it is delicious. Or have it on its own on a plate and use, um, use a bit of sourdough bread to uh, scoop it up. It's really, really tasty. I'm just gonna cut these a smaller. So 
So what I'll do with this when it's finished cooking is I lightly freeze a portion of it straight away because if I don't put it away straight away, it tends to stay in the pan and every time you pass it, uh, a spoon gets pulled out and a mouthful gets taken uh, because it is just really, really delicious. So uh, I'll probably, once it's finished, as I said, just put a portion away straight away. Now this is a gorgeous looking mix. You might not be able to see because of the steam, but it is really, really tasty looking. So I'm gonna leave that there for a second. We're gonna pop half of this. Now, because it's quite a big portion, I might end up using the whole tin this time, but we'll see once you've added a little bit of milk, what it's going to look like. Now, a lot of people will use half and half, but if you are using a full tin of um, the soup concentrate that you use a full tin of milk or a full tin of water. But uh, I'm gonna just go on taste, me being the one who never measures anything. The punnets of, um, oh sorry, but the punnets of mushrooms I usually get are a little bit smaller. These were quite large today, so I wasn't sure if it was gonna be the same amount. Okay, so at this point, I am going to, the roast potatoes are nearly ready. I'm going to add in my tofu. So that's not a lot of tofu, uh, it's about 200 grams I suppose for that large, large portion of mushrooms. So 100 grams of tofu, you're getting I suppose about 12, on average 12 grams of protein. So um, the chickpeas are going to add to the protein count there, which is great. So where's my tea towel gone? Is that thunder? Thunder and lightning in West Cork today. Might affect my uh, ability to go for a swim. Okay, so how much chicken would you like, guys? Chicken. Breast or leg? Breast. What do you want, broth? Okay, maybe a bit less. Okay. 